He was good in virtually everything he took, took up, and he's known as a universal genius. Of course, along with Michelangelo, he's in a stratosphere by himself. These are two painters, two artists. Michelangelo was mainly a, a sculptor, but two artists who define art. You can argue about the third greatest artist, but not about the first, because they're tied. You can take them in either order. Anyway, as one of the two greatest artists, you would think he would be prolific. And yet, he's, he painted only about a dozen paintings. Among the dozen are the two most famous paintings in the history of art. No one will argue that the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper are these two paintings, the most famous. You can usually explain ordinary genius. You can say, uh, smart parents have smart children. They can be very supportive parents. The children can, there has to be many books in the house. That's key. Not just one book, the Bible. They'll have lots of books in the house. They don't have to be all read, but they have to be there. The supportive parents can send their children to, into good uh, educational institutions. They might go to Caltech or Princeton in mathematics or physics. And if they're really lucky, they'll win a Nobel Prize. That's a tangible reward. But these you can understand. The Beethoven, the Leonardo, the Michelangelo, there's no explanation for them. These are, maybe it's the way their brains are wired. Maybe there's a physiological anomaly. But there's no explanation for these handful of transformative geniuses. When he was doing anatomical studies, for example, he said you have to sketch from eight different directions, for example, the same thing, to, pre to describe uh, everything so precisely. Uh, he would apply the scientific method before the scientific revolution. He would observe first without any, any preconceived ideas. When you're that intelligent, it's almost better if you don't have an education, because you'll be saddled with the ideas of Aristotle and, frankly, fairly poor scientists from the ancient times. There were much better scientists than Aristotle in ancient times. Archimedes, Eratosthenes, Aristarchus were much better. But the church accepted what Aristotle said, and that put science behind. Leonardo is really a bundle of contradictions. He was Ill an illegitimate child, born in 1452, on April the 15th, which is tax day here. Although we know him for being so prolific, producing so much, he thought that he produced so little that in his deathbed he turned to an assistant and he asked, did anything get done? Among the contradictions, he was a pacifist in his life, and yet uh, he worked for almost 20 years in Milan for the Sforza family as a military engineer, devising weapons. This is very much like Einstein, whose famous letter started the Manhattan Project that, started, that of course, led to the atom bomb, and yet he was a pacifist. He was left-handed in a time when uh, the word sinister was still applied uh, to describe the left-hander. Leonardo was a vegetarian. He would buy birds in the marketplace just to release them. Leonardo and Michelangelo, around 1503-1504, were commissioned to do a pair of murals on the same very large wall in the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. Uh, they both started, they both made their drawings or cartoons. The cartoon is a full-size drawing. However, the commission fell through. Leonardo had started a little bit earlier and he started applying a paint on the work, on the wall, but it started running. It was an experimental technique that he, had, he was using and he tried to dry it with heat and it, ran, and it was a disaster. Nonetheless, the underdrawing should be on this wall. Fifty years later, Vasari, the great art historian, 
was uh, uh, commissioned to build a, to uh, cover this up, covering up the great beginnings of Leonardo and Michelangelo's art. And since Vasari was such a great um, uh, fan of Leonardo, it's thought that he built a wall in front and saved Leonardo's own work for a future generation. And what Saraceni is doing is, is wonderful. He's applying high technology in the spirit of Leonardo. Leonardo would have liked this. He's using neutron activation, which is a way of, uh, uh, of essentially imaging through walls. And you can find something the size of a pin in a haystack the size of the pyramids using neutron activation. What you do is you activate the material with neutrons, then you look at the gamma ray spectrum or the radiation, and you see the signature of the, of the material. And it's known what paints Leonardo had been using uh, in his time so that we would actually be able to see through this wall to know if there is a painting behind it. So Saraceni is, to me, a, a very noble uh, scientist and uh, art researcher. <laughs>